Since last March, Dave and I have been working on renovating Kalea and the transition to an emission-free vessel. It has been hard work and blood, sweat, and tears have been poured into this project. We neglected to film small projects because the seemingly easiest task took so long given it was generally the first time either of us were doing it. Amidst the chaos that surrounded projects related to the electric motor, batteries, and solar setup, we worked on projects like remodeling the V-Birth, making storage space more accessible, remodeling the galley with beadboard, installing a new sink, stainless steel hardware, faucet heads, foot pumps, alcohol stove, and cabinet space, repainting behind the starboard berth, new hatch trim, making a dodger, repainting and varnishing, a new head, bowsprit, and sails, and turning this disorganized, chaotic mess into the coziest saloon. It's been a very long six months, but along the way, we've met some amazing people with a love for sailing so large they shared it with us making the long, hard months a little more bearable. In this episode, we complete our transition to an emission-free vessel. There were ups and downs and a very steep learning curve. If you're interested in making the transition as well, but just don't know where to start, I will be compiling all of the information into a blog post. When I finish, I'll link it in the description below. Hi, I'm Christy and this is Dave. We live on Oahu, and this is our sailboat. We're excited to share our experience sailing around the islands with you. Welcome aboard, Kalea. The motor controller that came in the Thunderstruck motor kit was a 48 volt Sevcon Gen 4 size 6 controller. That meant we needed to run a 48 volt electric system on the boat to power the motor controller. Our initial setup was going to have four 12 volt solar panels wired in series to reach 48 volts, but that didn't work because we had no space. So we ended up with one 54.4 volt solar panel on our stern pulpit. Um, so right now I'm just kind of laying out the diagram of our electric setup. Uh, we have a 60 amp MPPT solar charge controller. It's definitely a too high of an amperage. Um, we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into at the time. Um, we bought four 12 volt, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour LifePo batteries. Uh, we wired them in series to reach 48 volts. That's actually about 50 something and change. Uh, then there's a contactor that came in the Thunderstruck motor kit, a motor controller, and a 10 kilowatt motor. It's gonna be a ground running from the contactor to the controller and a positive with a fuse. Uh, we're gonna wire the batteries in series as seen in the diagram, connecting the most negative part of the batteries to the motor controller and the most positive part of the battery to the contactor. Uh, then we have a positive running from the solar panel to the solar charge controller to the most positive side of the battery. And we have a ground running from the solar panel to the solar charge controller to the most negative side of the batteries. Um, the solar charge controller controls everything, so we don't really have to worry about, um, you know, overcharging or any of that stuff. This is the gear reduction. So this is what it looks like, everything out of the two packages. Um, all you get is this, which is really surprising. It's crazy how something this small will be able to move our boat. Right now we're just kind of taking inventory of everything that we have to make sure when we actually set it up, um, we know exactly what we need to do. What is this? I don't know. What box did you take it out of? This box. There's no label on it? No, that was it. Yeah, I've got no idea. Hey, let's read off the parts. The motor. Controller. Tyco contactor. Is that Tyco? No, T connectivity kilobyte. No. Three black motor cables. One red contactor cable. Wiring harness with key switch. Throttle. And throttle. Cable boots right here. We have all the parts. 
We ran into a space issue, so we ended up returning three of the panels and keeping one to charge our 12 volt house battery. Our solar setup was probably the most difficult part of our transition to electric propulsion, as we needed to fab a new stern pulpit without compromising integrity and safety. The saga of the solar panels. So we bought a Panasonic 335 watt, um, I think it's like a 70 volt solar panel, but we, we get like 60. It's like know. a house panel. Yeah, it's a house panel. So as soon as we bought it, we couldn't even get a warranty. Um, it's huge. It's huge. It's like three and a half by five and a half feet, which is like a meter by like a meter and a half. After weighing out our options for a battery bank, we decided to go with Relyon's RB100s. They are 12.8 volts. 100 amp hour batteries weighing in at around 30 pounds each. We charged them individually to 100% with a battery charger and then wired them in series to reach 48 volts. Got here at probably 12 noon. Hoping to just accomplish this. It is now about five o'clock. Chrissy measured the wrong nuts. You need to keep going back to the store to find the right ones. Then one of the small nuts, the old ones, were stuck on the bolt. And then we needed a grinder so we could go to the store again for like the sixth time. We haven't been recording anything um, because just the smallest thing, like finding the correct nut size, um, takes all day. Just cutting the wood, you know, using a hole saw to cut the holes in the wood. The right size. It's like, you think it's easy, as we do. Um, yeah, but it's not. Uh, so, here we are. All right, so here we have the gear reduction. We had our friend drill some poles into this um, steel. Um, and then we made these kind of engine mounts. Step one. We got the motor installed. How exciting is this? To the angle from the back. We got the prop shaft, we got the coupler, we got the uh, gear reduction shaft, and then we got this. This right here is the gear reduction. There's two pieces that he's putting on right there. There's what's called a hub and then there's a pulley. And the pulley is the bigger part that you see. And there's a hub that's directly on the, the motor shaft. And there's three bolts that you put on the inside of the hub facing the motor. But you can't get the hub on with the pulley on. And you have to bolt the hub and the pulley together. It's really confusing. Installing that motor controller there and it's been a really nice sunset so far so step one is to remove this from the top of the motor this is just like a protective element it's plastic and then you attach the three black motor cables to their corresponding locations on the Subcon controller. I'm gonna give you some pretty good instructions. Um, you following that in their video online. Right now, Dave is attaching the keyway. We're gonna just keep it in the same spot we had our old one. Yeah, so far so good. The next step is to attach the motor controller to the contactor. We decided to get Ancor cables for our system. They are the recommended marine grade wires. We made them ourselves with tools and supplies from West Marine. We used four AWG cables throughout our entire system um, because the batteries required four or six AWG, so we just went with four. If you aren't familiar with cable sizes, the lower the number, the thicker the wire. And the thicker the wire, the more efficient they are. Or in other words, your system doesn't encounter as much resistance and generates less thermal energy, which is energy lost that could have been used by your electrical system. 
I'm not sure. Should work on it. You forgot to connect the... What? Con was it part of the contactor? Uh, no, it was just a random black wire. They didn't say what it was for. That was running from the 8-pin connector up here. So... Just part of some... Probably, probably part just of the ground. Complete, yeah, complete the ground system. Moment of truth. Are there no flashes? No flashes! <laughs> oh my god, how exciting! When I mounted this, I didn't know which way was forwards or backwards. So right, this Careful. this way should be forwards. This way should be backwards, but it's possible that when we turn it this way, it might be it might go backwards. Uh, this is our Renogy Rover. 60 amp MPPT charger. Um, we're gonna connect this big panel to it. Today I'm mounting the batteries. Uh, the first step I took was screw down the white uh, base. Um, step two is I got these brackets. I'm gonna put them in the front and back. I was able to secure the batteries with these brackets. I want to be able to secure them with wise as well. Um, I'm gonna do that with a ratchet. These have a 500 pound capacity, and I was thinking of doing two, but I think we'll actually just be okay with one. Last step we have in our electric conversion is mounting the solar panel. I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. What if we do all this work and it can't even get us out of the channel? We made it out of the channel, but were we able to make it back in? Click the bell to get notified the next time we post a video. In the meantime, I'll be working on a blog post that explains each electric conversion step in detail, sharing our experiences along the way. If you're not interested in our DIY projects or converting your sailboat to electric propulsion, I'm really sorry if this is a dry video. Um, Dave and I want to make a constructive review after using the products that support our setup after a few weeks. And then we want to make sailing vlogs every other weekend or so, taking our family and friends that live thousands of miles away with us around Oahu and the rest of the island in the Hawaiian archipelago. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, Feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you guys.